Hello strangers, my name is Rose Goldthorpe. I am the writer-director of this podcast and I want to welcome you to The Greenlands Presents. This podcast is all about the magical world of the Greenlands. If you want more information about the Greenlands or want to submit a script or be involved in the project as a voice actor or even just, you know, throw money at us, check out our website at the-greenlands.com, the-greenlands.com, or tweet at us on Twitter at Greenlands The or Instagram. These also will be put on YouTube. I'm very excited for this new season called The Baroness's Beef. Called that because she has beef with everyone. It's a problem. As with the previous two seasons, we meet a new cast of people and also meet some old returning favourites. This season, we get to meet Adamant's family and find out why it is that he is like that. The events of this season occur while the boys are away at school and then on their quest to the Sisters of the Middle Sun, so it runs parallel to the Knights Erratic. As more episodes from this new season come online, we will be removing old episodes of The Night's Erratic and putting them up on YouTube and on an archive on our website on thegreenlands.com. For this episode of The Baroness's Beef, I would like to thank our amazing cast, Andrew Veal, Charles Mode, David McCran, Helen Berry, Kitty Bennett, Linda Dutzen, Sam Parry, Sophie Cole, Vicky Holding and Zoe Cunningham. I hope you all have a lovely and fantastic week. Scene 59. Interior, Stettel's house study. Morning. Stettel is writing at his desk. The door opens and the servant comes in, ushering in Ethelberta. The servant curtsies and leaves. Thank you, Gretchen. Good morning, Stettel. Stettel gets up in surprise. Um, good morning, Ethelberta. To what do I owe the pleasure of this early morning visit? Ethelberta sits down. Just a little thought I had. Stettel sits back down. And what was that? Stettel, do you have a handful of acquaintance who might, for a small fee, come and pretend to attack the castle? What in the Greenlands for? Well, to convince Harold that we really do need proper armed retainers, and a decent number of them. I can't just go round staring up the locals to kill people, Ethelberta. I am a priest of the sun, and am supposed to be a pacifist. You don't need to kill people, Stettel. Of course not. But if you had, well, just a few people to wave axes and shout threats up to the castle walls for a little while, then Harold would be forced to see the need for armed retainers, you see. But why in the Greenlands would I do this? Because I would pay off all of your debts and increase your supplies, and... Ah, I see. Stettel gets up and ushers Ethelberta to the door. Look, keep things mum, and I'll have a little think about it, all right? Ethelberta smiles and then goes out. Thanks, Stettel. I knew you'd help. Stettel frowns and sits back down at his desk Mm. while drumming his fingers. He suddenly has an idea. He stops drumming and smiles. Scene 60, Exterior Castle Gardens Day. Ethelberta is striding about the lawn near to the entrance of the keep. Imilda is hesitatingly following her about, and Yisa is sitting nearby on a bench, looking disgruntled. Yes, I was thinking we could have some sort of triumphal arrangement in front of the arch. As the wedding party arrives, what do you think? She gestures. I'm not too sure what you mean, Bertie. Well, people waving garlands and wreaths, that sort of thing. Well, then how would the party get through the door then? Smelly, you really are too silly sometimes. They can hold bending boughs up over their heads. She gestures dramatically. What? The Duchess and her people arrive with lots of twigs? It's all stupid! No, it's not. It's celebratory. Ribbons and green boughs, you know. She smiles brightly at her audience. We must look bright and happy. Scene 61. Interior, Castle, Ethelberta's bedroom, day. 
Burb is standing on a stool, and a maid is pinning up his new jerkin, while Burb is scowling horribly. He wriggles and sighs. His outfit is an overdone confection of pinks and whites, with lots of gold braid and white hose. Ethelberta is standing, watching and smiling. Imelda and Yisa are sitting on the bed, and Yisa is scowling. Mom, why do I have to wear this? It's pink, and all the boys will laugh at me. You'll just have to ignore them. I'm matching you to the flowers. Burb folds his arms and scowls. I'm not a ruddy flower girl. No, you're the bridal pair's page. Don't want to be the man's page. He's weird. You're lucky. I've got to be his wife. There's no point in this hostility, you two. We have to get on with our lives. Wisa has to get married, and you, young man, have to get educated. Ah, to be young again. (laughs) It's okay for you, Smelly. You escaped both. Wisa! Scene 62. Interior Draper's Shop Day. Stettel comes into the shop. The draper's wife looks up. And nods. Morning. Good morning, mistress. I've come to collect my robe. Who is it? It's that priest again. Maybe he'll have the money this time. Mistress Walleye gets the robe out from under the counter and she hands it over to Stettel, who takes it. That'll be four florins, father. Yes, um, well, I'll be paying you in a couple of weeks or so, as I have a large sum arriving then. Oh, yeah. Who from then, eh? You can hardly expect me publicly to announce my debtors, but this will be a large sum. Well then, we'll expect payment in the next week or two then, eh? Stettel turns to leave. Of course, my good woman, of course. Good day, good day. Mistress Walleye glowers sourly at his retreating back. Scene 63... Exterior Castle Gardens Day. Ethelberta is summing with Imelda on a bench. Ethelberta espies Burb entering through an external gate and heading for one of the keep doors. Uh, Burb? Burb stands still, does not turn around, but sighs and puts his head on one side. Burb, come here now! Burb drags himself sulkily across the grass to his mother. Yeah? I beg your pardon, young man. Yes, Mother. Why did you miss your second fitting this morning? Don't want to be a page. Lord Greenhurst will think that very strange. Don't care. He's a weirdo. A what? She looks at Imelda for confirmation of Burb's insanity. I was talking to Gudgeon, and he said that he'd been talking to one of the Duchess's footmen. So... And he said that no one ever sees the Duke and the Lord Greenhurst when they're in the castle. That's weird. Are you saying that the Duchess keeps them locked up? Dunno. That's what Gudgeon said. This does not exempt you from your second fitting, Burb. I want to see you in my room immediately after breakfast tomorrow, young man. Now off you go. Burb turns and hurries away. Yes, ma'am. Ethelberta turns to Melda. Whatever will they invent next? Scene 64, Exterior Woodland, Afternoon. Yaisa and Clarissa are both riding at a walk. They are both astride. Yaisa is wearing Burb's clothes, but Clarissa wears a gown. Your mom will kill you if she sees you astride. Don't care. Think I might start wearing men's clothes, like you, you know? How? You haven't a brother, and your father's at least seven feet high, and he would kill you too. Um, when you're married, you'll be able to wear what you want. Don't think so. Why? Lord Greenhurst seems like quite a soft touch. Don't know. I ain't touched him. <gasps> Clarissa screams in affected horror. Oh my god, I didn't mean that. Doesn't matter anyway, Clary, because I ain't marrying him either. They'll make you. They can't if I'm not there. You going to, like, run away? Yep, during the reception, just after they've arrived. And while they're all drinking father's Galarian wine. Can I come with you? Issa shrugs nonchalantly. Yeah, if you remember to pack all your jewels. But wear men's clothes, of course. Cool! Like, really awesome! Scene 65, interior cave day. Stettel tiptoes while peering onto the mouth of a cave. 
He is wearing his usual black with cloak. Yoo-hoo! Anyone there? Uh, chief? Three brigands jump out at him, drag him to the floor, oh, and pin him I just come to see your chief. The chief steps out into the light. What do you want, priest? Uh, I, I have a little proposal. Oh, yeah? <sighs> Let him up. Stettel struggles to his feet and brushes himself down. The chief stands with his hands on his hips, looking interrogatively at Stettel. Uh, well, if you like, um, well, if you uh, would like to uh, take, as in help yourself to the Baron's castle, I would um, uh, help you, and we could uh, um, split the revenue from the estate. Uh, you could be my army. And how exactly would you help? Well, when you're attacking, I'll open one of the sally ports from the inside. They won't dream that I'm on your side. Is that it? Um, uh, no. Uh, also, I would kidnap Wisa, their daughter, so that they would not try to retake the castle. <sighs> so, when does this happen? Uh, in around three weeks after the wedding. I'll send word... Stettel holds out his hand, and the chief slowly takes it. Uh, a bargain? Yeah, then. Quite an idea for a holy man. They shake. Scene 66. Exterior woodland morning. Burb is fiddling around with some metal greaves on the floor with Kazak. I think if we can fasten these greaves together more firmly, see, the bang powder will be able to go and fire nails and stuff in one direction. Burb gets up, looking irritated. Yeah, but I've got to go, because Eurissa's getting married to that stupid Greenhurst around noon. Boring. Yeah, but... Burb suddenly grabs him and points. Look! Through the trees, a carriage pulls into view and stops. They see the Duchess get out and walk through the trees towards the other side of the glade from where they are. The boys melt back into the trees a little while listening. The Duchess gets a mouse out of her pocket, waves her other hand over it, and loudly pronounces, Shoot him! The mouse turns into the Duke, who stands there naked and embarrassed, hiding his privates. The Duchess then does the same, with another mouse, and it turns into Lord Greenhurst, who is similarly embarrassed. Come, your clothes are in the carriage. You can dress there. She marches off, and they follow her. Burb turns to Kazakh, aghast with open mouth. Do you see that? The Duchess is a witch. I've got to warn you, Issa. He races off with Kazakh at his heels. Scene 67. Interior, castle, Uisa's bedroom, morning. Ethelberta and Imelda are standing, watching the tire woman dress Uisa in her bridal gown of white muslin and white flowered wreath on her head. Oh, you look so beautiful, my dear. I'm sure I shall weep. Uisa looks boot-faced. Yes, right. You're going to be so happy with Lord Greenhurst. No, I'm not. Whatever is the matter with you, Issa? Don't you like him? I can't marry him! Why is it not? There's not another young man, is there? Um, um, no, but... Imelda looks out the window near where she is standing. Oh, look, they're here. They're here. Ethelberta hurries to look out as well. Oh, let me see. Scene 68, interior castle dining hall, morning. The Baron's family are standing around near the buffet table in their best clothes, and the servants are pouring wine for them and the Duchess's family. The Duchess's two ladies in waiting are standing around, sniffling disapprovingly at the food in the family. Issa is standing at the edge of the group. Having excused herself from conversation with Lord Greenhurst, she slowly starts to edge away from the group. Suddenly, Burb appears at her elbow and tugs her clothes while looking nervously around. Tell Mother that I need to talk to her. Now! He is dirty, dishevelled, wearing his outdoor woods clothes and is out of breath. Burb, where have you been? Mum will go mad if she sees you. Bring her here. 
Bring her here. I've got to tell her the magic word. No, I'm not getting mixed up in your latest excuses. She hurries away while Ethelberta is talking with the Duchess and the Baron with the Duke. Lord Greenhurst is picking up a piece of cheese with interest. Scene 69, interior castle, Yusa's bedroom morning. Yusa is dressed in Burb's clothes and is throwing other clothes onto a cloth on her bed. There is a stick nearby, also on the bed. Yusa looks grim. I'm not! I'm not! Scene 70, interior castle dining hall, morning. Yusa is just sneaking away, out through a passage, with her clothes tied up in a bundle on a stick, and she passes by the open dining hall door. Suddenly, she hears repeated screams and looks in at the scene. The screaming is coming from Imelda, who is standing on a chair to avoid two mice racing around. Burb is hopping up and down with glee, and the Baron is looking dumbfounded. See? I told you! I told you! How dare you! How dare you! The Baroness recovers herself. How dare I? She rapidly crosses over to the Duchess and slaps her soundly across the face. You old witch! Trying to steal our daughter and our money, were you? The witch screams and lunges at Ethelberta's hair ah! and headdress, uh, uh, but is quickly torn away by the Baron and Burb. Robin! Gudgeon! Harry! Throw these harpies out now! The men come over from their places near the doorway and manhandle the struggling, cursing Duchess and her waiting woman out. Yisa rushes into the dining hall, still wearing Burb's clothes. She rushes up and hugs her mother. Mom! Mom! Was Lord Greenhurst a mouse? Is the Duchess woman really a witch? She takes both of her mother's hands. You won't marry me to a mouse then, eh? Ethelberta smiles, hugs, and holds her daughter. No, I won't marry you to a mouse, daughter. I'm so sorry for not realising. Ethelberta kisses Yisa and fusses with her hair and headdress while Burb executes a caper around the table. He punches out his arms into the air alternately. A stitch in time, the witch is mine. A stitch in time, the witch is mine. The Baron sighs, sits down heavily on a stand chair next to the table. He puts his feet up on another stand chair. He reaches over, plucks up a large serving bowl of flummery and serving spoon and puts it in his lap. He smiles and starts shoveling it in and then gives a loud, satisfied belch. <coughs> Ethelberta turns around and looks at him. Harold! Burb and Yuisa burst out laughing. Scene 71. Exterior Woods Day. Clarissa and Yuisa are riding along, Yuisa in Burb's clothes and Clarissa in her dress, but astride. Oh my god! She slapped her? Yeah, a real stinger of a slap too. You sure she was like a witch? Well, you don't usually get grocers or bakers turning people into mice then, do you? No, well, but whoa, it must have been really neat, man, like... Yeah, well, it's all over now. At least I don't have to live with that old hag. She must have, like, stolen her castle off someone, you know? Yes, my mother is going to make sure that everyone knows that she's a witch. Then she can't marry their children to her parrot. <laughs> <laughs> they both giggle. Also... I'm hoping that this has slowed Mother's marrying efforts on my behalf. Um, it's going to be totally dull then, huh? Not when I marry the man of my dreams. Clarissa becomes saucer-eyed. Who's he then? Issa raises her eyebrows and kicks her mount into a canter. Clarissa follows. Wait for me! Scene 72. Interior, castle dining hall, day. The Baron is striding off through the empty hall with a hammer in his hand and in his working clothes, while Stettel comes in at the front door and heads across the hall in the Baron's direction. The Baron looks up at his approach. Oh, hello, Stettel. Who oh, a close call that yesterday. Baron stops next to him, somewhat irritatedly. Well, it's over now. Uh, do you want something, Stettel? Well, uh, as you mentioned it, I was just thinking that perhaps you could find me a few florins from Uisa's dowry, which you won't be using now. Of course we will. Uisa will find someone else sooner or later. Yes, but meanwhile, 
I've told you before, Steddle. I have no spare money to be giving away, and anyway, you have a free house and all the free food we can send you. And firewood. The Baron strides off, and Stettel stands there, peeved. Well, then you'll get what's coming to you, brother. That was an episode of The Baroness's Beef from The Greenlands Presents. I'd like to thank the brilliant Steve Cummings for editing this episode and the amazing David Berlin for making the music. We're just a small podcast. We don't have any marketing budget or anything, so we rely on word of mouth to get people to hear us. If you like us or think somebody else would like us, please drop us a review or share us on social media. Tag us and we will love you forever. If you want to know more about the worlds of the Greenlands or want to sell your spirits to an ancient and dark nature god, check out thegreenlands.com, the-greenlands.com. If you want to access our archive of previously seasons, check out YouTube channel The Greenlands Official. We love you all. Don't get cursed by a witch. See you next time. <laughs>